So this is going to be a review of my Bobcat XRZ Pro uh, Zero Turn Rider. This is my Zero Turn mower. It's used for commercial lawn maintenance. Uh, so this is a general overview of some of the things. Uh, it's equipped with a Kawasaki FX691V engine. It's a 23 or 24 horse engine. Uh, it's higher end Cali. You have the Donaldson air filtration system, uh, dual cylinders. Um, so we'll start with the engine. You know, this, this was a great engine. You take a look at the hour meter. We're at 725 hours. I haven't had any problems with this engine. You know, I've kept up with the maintenance, did the oil changes, changed the oil filters. Uh, I would, you know, change it, everything. I would change the, the filter and the oil every 100 hours, uh, even though it recommended, you know, every, uh, every 200 hours for the oil filter. Uh, so I haven't had any issues with the engine. Uh, I can't say enough good things about the Cowies. I went through Kohler engines. I went through Briggs engines. Uh, both of them didn't last. I run all Japanese engines. I've never had an issue uh, on the uh, Xmark. Uh, I mean, on the Bobcat, I have the Cowie. And on the Xmark, I also have a Cowie engine as well. Um, so I haven't had any issues with these engines. Uh, I, when I first started, I had a Toro with a Kohler. And the Kohler just had constant starting issues. It was an unreliable engine. Um, and so in reality, you know, I'd rank the engines as Kawasaki being the best. Uh, Briggs and Stratton Vanguard is pretty good. Uh, underneath Cowie though, and the Kohler is at the bottom. So, um, and the pricing is comparable. So I would just always go with the Cowie engine. So this engine hasn't let me down. Haven't had any real issues with the engine, anything that I can think of. Uh, so we'll just move on to the rest of the machine. So you'll find with the commercial lawn maintenance, uh, most people are gonna be running, uh, well, it's a number of things. It could be Toro, Skag, uh, Xmark, uh, or Ferris. Those are the main ones. Um, the cut quality on the Turbo Force deck is amazing. Uh, the Bobcat cut quality is good. The Xmark is uh, phenomenal. They're known for that as well. Um, however, this was, the, uh, this was the Bobcat XRZ unit, which was their midline rider. Um, in reality, so uh, the price wise, I think this was 6,500 as opposed to 10 grand, you know, for um, the higher end units with the higher displacement engines. Uh, so for 6,500, you know, I'm at 725 hours now. Um, you're gonna get 1,200 hours out of the engine, um, but it's a very simple design. Um, you have some pulleys there. You have your uh, transaxles, the hydrostatic drive underneath. Uh, the fan system as well. Um, and so it's relatively simple. Um, now, again, this was a midline rider, and I was using it for commercial mowing. So we're mowing a lot of lawns, uh, and so the mower took a beating. Uh, so some things that I've replaced on this mower, um, the caster forks, uh, the welding on there, um, you know, there's a, there's a rod that extends up, and it's welded down to this... Uh, um, U-shaped bracket, and uh, that went around 200 hours, so just replace those or re-weld them. I have all the, the MIG welding uh, stuff in the garage. Um, and then these were not solid, uh, so I, um, the ones that initially came with the mower were inflatable, so I actually switched those out. Uh, the inflatable ones are just a pain in the neck. They always go flat. So a lot of guys will either, um, they'll poke holes in the tire and fill it with the foam, uh, but I just got solid rubber, and it's one of those things where I'm not going to have to worry about it. Um, so it's simple there. Um, moving on to the uh, the platform, you know, I like this. They have uh, this is sort of standard with the riders, but they have the the no slip uh, sort of uh, whatever this thing is. Uh, it's just uh, I guess it's, uh, it's you know plastered on there with some adhesive, uh, so it prevents you from slipping. Uh, the deck adjustment system is is easy. Um, there's no real issues there. You just get on, um, you just push it in, and uh, change it to the height that you need. And you know the height range is pretty diverse. We go from one and one half to uh, you know four and a half. But sometimes on you know heavily fertilized lawns and stuff, you may be cutting it on transport at four and five eighths. Uh, so that was easy. Um, from the operator panel, you know we have our PTO here. Our, our on switch there and uh, the uh, the choke here. I mean the choke here and the throttle mechanism here and the hours uh, I never really use this that much, but um, you can check the air filter meter as well 
Um, you just click it and it'll, it'll show you the read on that when you need to, you need to replace that. So it's saying now. Um, here you have the parking brake. Uh, this is sort of a pain in the neck um, because every time you want to start the machine, you know, this has to be engaged. You start it. And then in order to move, you move that down and you move in the lap bars. So I thought that was a pain in the neck, you know, the pain 6500 or whatever for a mower, and it still has the parking brake on it. Um, but it's not a big deal. Uh, and then in the underside of the machine, uh, and obviously I have to clean it out, a lot of grass in there, so you want to clean it out as best you can. Um, not, uh, we, I actually had to replace these, these two, around the 500 hour mark. Um, those things sort of split. Um, and so, uh, they just had to, and I actually just re-welded it there. You can see, um, and just made sure, uh, what these things will do is just, uh, give the deck more rigidity, stop it from moving around. So, uh, replace, uh, this one and, and this one in there. Um, the deck pulley system, I mean, very, very easy. I mean, you just, uh, unscrew, unscrew that bolt there, unscrew the other bolt and you can just slip the belt on easily. There's a little tension spring right there in the idler pulley and you just get it in. And through there and it's uh it's simple uh, so it's not overly complex um so that was uh so that that was the deck mechanism um and then uh yeah the i just run standard blades on it uh maybe um switching to high uh, lift blades or mulch blades when we get into fall but uh, for the most part i just use standard blades uh one of the things i didn't like though is um is the uh so this is the gas tank uh, there's a lot of capacity in the gas tank. I think it's like six gallons, which is plenty for me. Um, but there is no a gas gauge. So you don't really know uh, where exactly the gas level is. So that was a pain in the neck. Um, and uh, But you can visually see it in there. Uh, so I just check it every now and again. Uh, the batteries tucked away in there. Haven't really had any issues. Um, a lot of times, if, you're, if you don't have a garage and the mower's sitting out there, uh, you're going to have to replace the battery every season because if you leave it out there in the cold, uh, it eventually goes bad. Unless you have a battery maintainer, in which case um, that'll prevent that from happening. But I end up replacing the battery every year or so. Uh, I like this. Uh, it comes with the, um, the Hydra Gear 3400, uh, you know, um, I guess hydrostatic drive. Uh, it has fans over top to assist in cooling. Uh, so that was a good feature there. Um, and then the oil, the hydrostatic fluid is right in here, so you change it every four or 500 hours. And then um, you have the springs here uh, that go affixed right, uh, right to the back of the seat. The seat is pretty comfortable. I mean, it's not like the Ferris, where it has so shock absorption systems on, uh, on the front casters and the back wheels, but the, the tires muffle a lot, of, uh, a lot of the impact of the ground. Again, this is not a Toro My Ride. Uh, so you are going to feel some of those bumps. Uh, it's not it's not that bad. Um, the seat is real comfortable. It's a good quality seat. Um, as long as you sit back and see, it, it mitigates a lot of the a lot of the bumps. Uh, but real wide tires, and then the only um, never had any issues with the tires. Uh, no issues with uh, tearing up turf. Um, and then every now and again, maybe the mower will run over something. So I'll just uh, plug the tire, which is relatively simple. I'll probably do a video on that later on. Uh, and then as we get to the back of the machine, so the engine was fine, um, but what ended up happening is the back frame on the mower, you'll see this is not a, this is not the standard frame. I actually uh, install this myself. Um, what I'm doing is during fall, I'm doing heavy leaf cleanups. So um, I have the Cyclone leaf system, which is like a tow behind unit that hooks up to the uh, discharge chute. And uh, so the mower will just be engaged. It'll shoot all the stuff into uh, into a huge hopper and it was so heavy that it pulled off the back frame so the back frame wasn't really that well constructed uh so what it ended up happening is i'm using uh probably three eighths inch steel uh and so i reinforced this whole back panel i welded those and you can see where on uh this was actually the original um this was the original back end of the mower uh so i had to re-weld it because uh uh, there was some, it was pulling so much weight it actually tore it off. Uh, but here is, um, so what I ended up doing is I uh, put these uh, steel bars going across. So 
all the bolts are real thick bolts. Uh, I mean, this might even, this is probably a three eighths inch, inch bolt. And so it's, uh, so uh, I got two bolts there and one there uh, just to reinforce this back end. And it's situated right over the wheel. So uh, the wheels are gonna be um, handling most of the weight. It's, it's right over the, the axles there. Uh, so that was the one thing that I had to do. So, I mean, overall, I, I would recommend this mower. I would buy it again. Um, I really, um, if, we're, if I'm looking at new mowers, I like the compactness of the stand-on mowers. However, they're comparably priced with uh, the zero turn. So I'll always do zero turns. Um, I have a, I think it's like a nine by 16 trailer. So uh, I can fit, I can fit the small walk behind on there and the, the big rider as well. So, I mean, overall, as you, as you work on the machine and um, you get to know it, you get to the feel of it, uh, there aren't really, um, you're able to deal with any issues as they arise, uh, but I always recommend having the, uh, the solid rubber front, front tires, having some welding abilities if anything goes bad. You know, when you go to the shop, it can get pretty expensive unless you have a real good guy. I have a real good guy um, who works on my equipment if anything fails, um, and and um, and that makes it a lot easier. But I mean, no, only things I had to replace were, uh, you know, just some maintenance on those brackets and uh, changed out these to solid rubber and uh, had nothing go wrong with the engine. Uh, the engine has been bulletproof, no issues with the starter. Uh, it just keeps chugging along. So I love the Kawasaki engines. I'm always a big fan. Uh, it's a high quality engine, you know. Uh, we have the Donaldson air filtration system. Um, the, no issues with the carb or anything. It's just a smooth, smooth purr. So it's a good engine. Uh, so overall, I would definitely uh, recommend this mower buying out uh, beginning. Um, you know, if you're younger, you're still able to take some of the bumps, uh, you know, as you go along. Uh, however, if you're you know, sort of an older guy, uh, you probably want to get, you want to take a closer look at the Ferris or the Toros or even the X marks, you know, where they have the free floating system. You will pay for that. You know, you're looking at 10 grand for a mower. Um, you know, I, I like this mower because it was $6,500. Now I think it's $6,700, but the return on investment is very quick. You can make that back in a month of cutting. Um, so, you know, I thought it was a great machine. Um, I like the, um, you know, the deck adjustment system and, um, and, uh, we have three anti-scalp rollers in the front. Uh, there were none in the back, but I've never really had an issue with, uh, with scalping. Um, again, with the, uh, with the height adjustment here, you can just move this up and down if you're, if you're going near bumps or, or anything like that. And then all the parts and stuff are readily accessible. You know, if, if anything needs to be repaired, uh, all you have really, all, the only, specialty parts you have maybe the brackets and the the pulley but other than that and it's a good machine um so uh yeah i'm, I'm sticking with bobcat and xmark um so that's that's the deal on the uh the bobcat xrz pro so i hope you guys enjoy it thanks have a good one